guys and welcome back to Crafty Quilting Designs. I hope you're well and having a really great day. Okay guys, so we're going to get into this quilt very quickly. I am going to just use a, um, a panel for this one. I'm very much into panels these days. They're quick and this is going to be a wall hanging to literally go on my wall for Christmas. Now, it just shouldn't take long to make. I've already made the blocks. I'm just gonna talk you through them so that they're quite easy to get together. But before we do that, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. And um, if you've been here before, thank you so much for joining me again. Now, what I wanted to go through very quickly is how to straighten your panels. Now, usually when you buy the panel, um, they usually cut it off the bolt and there is a stitch line or a cutting line, I should say, that um, can, is, is a targeted area for you to the simply to cut it off, okay? Now, sometimes when you buy it, they don't cut it properly and so your, um, your panel can be a little bit wonky. Now, what I tend to do to straighten it is that I don't, and I'll tell you what I don't do, okay? So what I've learned is that if you fold it, say front sides together or, you know, wrong sides together, it doesn't matter. What for me is that I cannot see where the other side is in terms of it, whether or not it's lined up properly, okay? Sometimes they come with a border, like this one comes with a border, sometimes it comes with another border on, on, on the other side as well. And so therefore, if I fold it, I find that I cannot tend to see on the other side where it, it's, it's landed properly. And what I mean by that is simply because the fact that it's wonky, it hasn't been cut straight, I may cut into an area that I don't want to cut. So what I tend to do is to open it up. So I will open it up and I'll literally put it on the grid line that I want on my mat and I will then lay my ruler down and cut it. And I will do that for all the sides. So whatever I cut away from the right side, I will cut away the same on the left and the top and the bottom. And that's how I actually straighten it out, all right? Now this one has lots of colors in it as will all of your Christmas panels. Now I am going to keep this border on there and it's a, uh, it's a sleigh. I'm going to keep it on. Now, you could cut it off and simply add another border to it, but I choose not to. I think I like it the way it is, and I'm simply just going to add a border around it. Now, I'm going to add a very simplistic block around it, and I've already cut it out. I'm just going to bring it in the shot and show you what they are. So, it's very non conventional Christmas colors but it's a border and there is a sort of sky blue already in the panel. Now, all I've done here is cut from yardage and I've taken two and a half inch strips and I sew them front sides together and I've cut them four and a half inches. That's all I have done, okay? Now, to lay this out is quite simple. You can get lots of different orientation to lay the border out, okay? Now, I am just going to go with one row. Now, if you want, you can do two rows for the borders using the same block, and I'll show you what I mean. So, let me show you, first of all, a block idea. So, for example, if you want, you can have the black as a dominant color. Put that there. And the other one... like so and therefore you get the real dark that sort of cross or twisty turn in the middle if you want you can use the other color instead of the black and I'm just twisting it to get the blue all right and that's what I mean if you want to use just a whole block okay you can do that as well okay if you want you can just simply do do this as well as another block entirely down to you uh, let me see there's another one or if i turn it this way and that way and this way and that way you get this one as well 
<coughs> which might be similar to the one we just had um if you want also you can just simply put it together like so really really down to now remember these patterns is going to be repeated so if this is your block it's going to be repeated so it's going to create something really pretty because if you make another block let me do one and show you what i mean so i'm going to make that simple block there and i know it doesn't look anything special but if i were to then do the same thing like so and then put the black on the outside it literally gives you another pattern. And you can also get very tricky. So just, just be mindful of what you're actually doing. And that's the whole thing about these um, blocks is to, they're there to trick you up. <laughs> so just take your time really. So I'm gonna put that one there. And then if I go there, so it gives you, so remember the blocks are just simply repeated. So they are going to give you another pattern altogether. And that's what I mean by it's being repeated. So you're going to get something different every time. And look at that. That looks pretty cool. All right. Now, what I am going to do for my one, I'm going to keep it to one row for my pattern and this is what I'm going to do I'm going to do just this I'm going to do a top border side border bottom border for all of it and that is simply it I'm just going to sew these together in rows and that is going to be my border pattern I don't want to confuse you so I'm just going to move some out the way that was correct so that is what I'm going to use for my border okay so I'm going to sew the top border first then the bottom then the sides and that is it I'm going to keep it as very simple remember I said if you wanted to double up and make a whole block for the border then that will increase the size of your um, quilt but I'm just going to keep it simple as I said right so what I'm going to do now is to just sew these front sides together and I will tell you in a minute um, how much you actually need. Now, what I did was simply take my quilt or my panel in this case and laid it down. I put these on the side. Because remember, you are making the side, the panels, <coughs> you are making, sorry, the, um, the border to fit the panel. It's not the other way around. So all I'm going to do is put it down and I am going to just lay it out. And this is how I tell myself how much I'm actually going to need for my border. Okay, and I'm going to more or less take in my seam allowance. So if I keep going, lay it all out so you can get an idea of what I mean. So it's just up and down, you twist and turn, try not to sew them together um, incorrectly. All right, so that is it. So it's starting from the top there, and I have, I have it sticking out there, okay? So what I am going to do is sew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna go sew together nine for my top, and then I am going to trim it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So when I sew the nine, I am going to fold it in half, get the middle, do the same for the panel, fold it in half, get the middle, then sew it onto the top. Once you have the top, the bottom is going to be the same. Once you have the other side, the other side is going to be the same. So I'm gonna sew this together. I'm gonna to come back and show you how to actually lay it all out. And let's get this done really quickly. As I said, it is going to be on the wall and I know the colors are not normal for Christmas but I like it because I like the fact that it's framed the whole thing out and what I actually did was lay everything all of the patchwork around the whole quilt top take a picture and see what it looks like and I really loved it all right so I'm going to insert a picture if I remember 
for you so you can see so that's what I tend to do just to get my borders right in my head I'll lay it all out or I put the fabric choice next to the quilt itself and then I decide right so I'm going to sew this together and then we'll come back and see what it looks like okay guys so update now I have already done the top and bottom and the side so this is what it looks like on the side so I'm about to go and do the other side now and basically I've just sewn them all together in the formation that I want it to be so for example this orientation and then I sew them together and for, um, stitched it front sides together that's it what I've done basically so I'm about to do the same thing for this side and then I'm simply going to quilt it and leave it just as this so I'll see you in a moment all right so once you have sewn it all together you need to definitely iron from the back and then the front and all I'm literally doing is pressing those seams down I'm just allowing the seams to go where they want to go so I'm not really forcing it any one way so if it leans left it's going to be pressed left if it leans right it's going to be pressed right so it doesn't really matter the most important thing is that it, allow, it lies flat um, what I would say also is that sewing this together is quite easy because everything lines up quite easily so you don't there is a little bit of a matching seam in the middle there but other than that it's really is fine and the borders come together nicely now as I said before this is a really beautiful simplistic um, quilt pattern so you can do this as an all over you don't necessarily have to use it in the borders but I choose to because I, I just wanted something really quick and simplified so once I've done the back I'm going to go to the front now and press it flat okay and this is what I mean by making sure the seams line up so that you can see it lines up really nicely there and it's not out of sync with each other and I'm not using any steam here it's just literally a dry iron and I'm just pressing it flat so that um, it lays on nicely now what I'm going to do is simply sew this on and then I'm going to start quilting it all right so we're going to get started on that Okay guys, so the quilt is completed. This wall quilt is absolutely beautiful. I'm calling it dog sleigh. As you can see, there's lots of, um, well, instead of having reindeers, there is dogs at it and it looks so beautiful. I have it on my wall in the hallway, just as you walk through the door in the entrance here. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, what do you think about the blue and black border around it? I think it looks really good just fantastic now i'm calling it dog sleigh <laughs> i just love it i just think it's so cute absolutely cute just really really fantastic i didn't do anything fussful in terms of quilting what i did do though was kept all of the colors for quilting in reference to the colors on the quilt so i'm moving a little bit close so hopefully i can zoom in see I'm using a different camera here today so I'm not really used to it right okay so if I zoom in so you can see there on the black I actually did I use black thread just to get those quilting done there on the tree itself I use green on the dogs I try to use the color of the dogs moving it all over and then um, on the background and when I say the background where the Dalmatian is I just use swirls so literally just kept to the colors but I think it looks really beautiful I'm just loving it I really didn't want to make any changes to it at all other than use it for what it is 
But I wanted to do something different with the borders and I think it works. What do you actually think, guys? Let me know in the description box down below. I just think it looks really fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. I can hear the birds calling me outside. They usually holler at me, holler at me, so they can get some food. That is the birdie that's been squealing at me. So he's actually eating now. I've given him a little bit of corn. You can actually hear me probably talking about him. <laughs> he comes every morning. It's him. I think he is the, the baby. And I think it's dad and mum that comes together. And they usually make a holler of a noise. I've probably caused a little problem for myself because now they expect me to feed them all the time. But yeah, but they... Um, so he's been hollering and squealing at the door and they don't usually fly away they stand there and watch you it's like where's my food <laughs> but yeah i don't know if you could have heard him when i was recording before but anyway he's actually eating he one of the favorite things he likes to eat is doritos so i've just crumbled up some and gave it to him there and i can just hear him pecking he absolutely loves it all right, so <laughs> let's go back to the quilting. Oh, this is a magpie, by the way, and they're very, very clever birds. They are so clever, I tell you. Very, very smart. Right, so let me go back to the um, the quilt. And then, <laughs> okay then. So mum has come now to eat. You can see her there eating. And she has a bit of a bad leg. That's one of the reasons why I tend to feed them. Um, but they're definitely a family. I know that for sure. Sorry about my chair squeaking. I'm trying to be very soft and gentle. So they don't hear me. But yeah, mom's the one who's actually sitting down there. She, um, she hops. And so um, she doesn't... Um, I don't know if she gets a good feed, but she looks pretty healthy otherwise. I don't know what's happened to her, but they've been coming here since we've moved in. Yeah, so there they are, enjoying their breakfast. <laughs> and they come for lunch and dinner. He's looking right at me. Lunch and dinner also. So they'll come, the, the younger one, the first one. Because mum is hopping there, so the younger one, he's the one who actually makes the noise. Um, sometimes dad does it as well, he'll come and make the noise and it's literally really loud. So you've got to calmly, you can't really ignore the sound, he's looking at me, you know I'm talking about him. <laughs> but yeah, it's just such a joy to watch them, it really, really is. I can spend hours doing it, but they are beautiful birds, very, very sensible. Um, we haven't named them, <laughs> but uh, they do recognize us. They're wild birds, but they do recognize us and uh, they know where to get their food. And they know what noise to make for us to come out and give them food as well. So, <laughs> all right guys, I just thought I'll share with you what happens in my daily life with these magpies. There's usually three, I don't know where dad is, but um, I'm sure by the time I put the camera down, he's gonna appear as well. Okay. So, see you later. Bye.